fabulous performance by the Haverford College and Bryn Mawr College chamber singers. They're a group of, today, what, 24? <laughs> many, many times a few more people, um, led by um, Professor Tom Lloyd, who is um, uh, the music director at Haverford College and the music director of this um, chamber singers, as well as a number of other groups um, at the college and also in the <coughs> Philadelphia area. So they've come up here by bus just to sing for you. They've learned some repertoire specifically for this group. So I'm just going to say, oh, right. Um, <laughs> turn off anything that causes or bringing with you makes any sense. And uh, no class to talk about. I never quite understood why you don't But anyway, no class to <laughs> So I want to introduce everyone to um, Tom. much. It's a real pleasure to be here. I'm a New Yorker myself, and it's great to uh, come back uh, anytime I can. And uh, we're very grateful to Joan Bregstein for making it possible for us to be here for all the arrangements. Uh, you'll hear her daughter singing beautifully in a few minutes, um, and it's a wonderful occasion. We have a varied program for you. The first group is a group of pieces in English, um, and the first one is the oldest piece on the program. Uh, it comes from the genre of English, English madrigals, which are night songs, uh, meant to be sung at night. This is when courtship had to do not with courting someone to uh, be married to, but courting someone to have an affair with in the court. That's why they called it courtship. <laughs> <laughs> Their romantic love was not for married people, it was for non, for people married to others getting together. <laughs> so uh, the way you did that was you got a group of friends, in this case five friends, you got together uh, to go sing with you uh, some uh, deeply poetic uh, thing about nighttime and all the wonderful things that can happen at nighttime. Um, and yeah. so we're lucky uh, several hundred years later to have this incredible music. We draw on sweet night. What uh, century? Uh, Fifteen. <coughs> I'm sorry, sixteen. 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 Yeah, the, the English were behind the Italians. They, as with everything, the English always waited until the French and the Italians figured it out. And then <laughs> <laughs>
we started off the semester as 32. We have 24 seniors with us uh, tonight. Uh, these are very busy folks in a variety of majors. Uh, we have people giving uh, presentations of their thesis in Chicago, uh, being in a Shakespeare play at Bryn Mawr tonight, uh, being in a family event in other places. So um, we're very happy to uh, have the folks here uh, to be with you and to sing this wonderful music. Uh, the next piece is the newest uh, on the program, most recently written and composed for the inauguration of Bryn Mawr's uh, current president, Kim Cassidy. Uh, it's a poem that she selected um, by Marianne Moore, who, uh, those who are Bryn Mawr alums, any Bryn Mawr alums in here? Uh, with no, uh, is Bryn Mawr's most famous poet. Um, and just had a recent biography of hers uh, published, uh, and we were honored to sing for that occasion of the announcement of that biography. Uh, this is a poem that uh, uh, touches on uh, finding freedom within imperfection. Uh, believing that even though we can't have everything just as we want it, even though we can't be all the, the kind of person that we would like to be, uh, nevertheless, uh, there is hope within that, uh, and there is even uh, possibly immortality in that. Uh, what are years? Mary and Moore. <coughs> Thank you. 
types of music from the early 20th century. Remember when this saying 20th century music? <laughs> well, this is Ray Vaughan Williams, the great Eng English composer, uh, whose portrait visiting Bryn Mawr is actually on the office uh, wall of the arts office of Bryn Mawr, should we say. I always like reminding myself of that when I see it. Uh, this is his setting of three Shakespeare songs uh, from Shakespearean plays. Uh, the first one is the, the famous uh, Full Fathom Five, uh, where Ariel is trying to persuade uh, Ferdinand, thank you, trying to persuade Ferdinand that it's really not so bad that his father died because there's this wonderful place you can go to that's close to where he is and you'll, you'll be there with the spear, of course, all of which is a plot to get him uh, wed to someone else and get his mind off of that and become uh, part of the kingdom of Prospero, who in the second song, The Cloud-Capped Towers, uh, is the, the famous song uh, ending with the words, we are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with sleep. Um, this is one of those settings that I find once you get to know it, it's hard to hear those lines, even as famous as they are, without hearing the music that goes with them. Um, and then finally, uh, taking less than a minute to sing, uh, over hill, over dale from Midsummer Night's Dream. <laughs>
Next we finish with another piece written just within the last year by another Philadelphia composer, Kyle Smith. Uh, it's called Wild Bright Sun, and it's from a set of pieces, The Constellation of Apollo, written for The Crossing, which is a professional choir in Philadelphia specializing in music of the 21st century. Uh, and as you'll see from the text in your program, it's, it's a literary text, it's an English translation of Boethius. While the bright sun most clear is beaming, gleaming in heaven, gloom and wrappeth over the world all other bodies. And it goes on from there, and it's similar to what are years in the sentiment of its last lines. Alas, that in the world nothing weareth firm and lasting long on this earth. Just a warning, there's a bass drum in this piece, so don't be alarmed. <laughs>
Next we have a group of five selections from the Jewish tradition, either by Jewish composers or music. <laughs> <laughs> he was confused because the first piece in the group is in English, but it's by Hans Gall. Has anyone heard of Hans Gall? Hans Gall was the major Brahms scholar of the first half of the 20th century, and he was also an important composer. Uh, he fled Nazi Germany uh, and made his way to Scotland, where he was professor at the University of Edinburgh for a very long time. Uh, writing and composing his music, his orchestral music and chamber music is performed all over Europe. If you look him up on the web, you'll see a website that has links to all his recordings. And I happened to stumble across some of his music in the Choral Library at Haverford when I first came there uh, 19 years ago now. Uh, John Davison, uh, the late John Davison, the theater, uh, theory professor at Haverford, uh, had collected some of his music for women's choirs. And I took some of it out and started playing. And I thought, this is amazing stuff. I mean, this is not just OK music. This is highly sophisticated, magical <laughs> settings that are very close to wonderful poetry in terms of the text. And so I looked further and found out what else he had written. And there's actually quite a bit. Uh, and so I did a recording with a uh, professional community choir I had uh, off campus uh, and wrote a paper. And that paper. Uh, it's gotten a lot of hits, more than anything else I've written, because of the interest in Gaul, because of the quality of his music. Uh, this is a setting of the Keats poem, To Sleep, uh, which may be familiar to you from, from other settings. Um, o soft embalmer of the still midnight, shutting with careful fingers and benign our gloom-pleased eyes, embowered from the light and shaded in forgetfulness divine. O soothest sleep, if it so please thee, close in midst of this thine hymn my willing eyes. Or wake the amen, ere thy poppy throws around my bed its lulling cherries. Then save me, or the passed day will shine upon my pillow, breeding many, many woes. Save me from curious conscience that still lords its strength for darkness burrowing like a mole. And then my favorite line, the couplet at the end, turn the key deftly in the oiled ward and seal the hushed casket of my soul.
might know the code from the collection. This is Hinei Matov, Sha'alu, Shalom, Yerushalayim, combination of two texts, um, both Psalms, Psalm 122, Pray for the Peace of Jerusalem, and Psalm 133, how good it is and how pleasant when brothers and sisters dwell together. soul because it then influenced uh, the rest of what he wrote. Uh, this piece um, comes in the middle of the service and it's one that uh, it's a special place for me because when I was going through school one of the ways I supported myself uh, having grown up Catholic was singing in reform synagogues in the uh, in the quartet behind the cantor. <laughs> and, and I sang uh, in the Catskills uh, many times for my holy days. Uh, I sang in uh, a, a temple out in Long Island. Um, but anyway, it was, it was a wonderful experience because it's such a rich repertoire that otherwise I wouldn't have gotten to know. Uh, but this is a very special piece. Uh, we hope you enjoy.
years ago, I was approached by a neighbor of mine in Havertown, just, uh, just outside of uh, Philadelphia and just near the college. Uh, his name was Alex Botwinick. I had met him before. Uh, he was a choir director in a local synagogue. And he said that he had just finished compiling a book of his father's music. His father was David Botwinick, who was a cantor for many years and still alive in his 90s in Montreal. He was a Holocaust survivor and wrote uh, quite a number of songs for soloist and choir and orchestra piano on Yiddish texts. And so I thought when we had the opportunity to come here, wouldn't it be wonderful to, to bring one of these back, uh, in addition to the fact that the soloist then was now Haverford alum, Naomi Goodman, uh, who's a member of the congregation. So we're thrilled to have her join us again to sing Kum Yeshai Schoen. Yeah. 